Okay guys, in this video we're going to be taking a look at an example of radioactive decay, but this is a good example to put in this section where we talk about exponential growth and decay models because often we are given some sort of model already defined that relates a couple of variables together and we're asked to navigate it. And so one thing that I want you to keep in mind is as we read through this, we kind of just want to identify what are the variables that we see here and what kind of an equation is this that we are expecting to work with. So first things first, I would say that in terms of the variables that we see here, let's read through and kind of try to pick those out. But what I'm going to ask us to do is just kind of record our values in a table to kind of make more sense of this. So it says, in living organic material, the ratio of the number of radioactive carbon isotopes, carbon-14, to the number of non-radioactive carbon isotopes, carbon-12, is about 1 to 10 to the 12th, where organic material dies. Uh, its carbon-12 content remains fixed, whereas its radioactive carbon-14 begins to decay with a half-life of about 5,700 years. To estimate the age of dead organic material, scientists use the following formula, which denotes the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 present at any time t in years. And so we have this model here, and what we're asked to do is estimate the age of a newly discovered fossil in which the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 is this ratio. So anybody reading through this for the first time is probably going, what did this all just say? But what I really like to kind of just kind of push you towards is identifying what are the things that are being related here. And so we have R and we have T. And with respect to T, I see that this is time. Okay. So time in this case is kind of like our independent X variable here. I'm going to put this on my table as T or time. This means that our other variable here is R. And with respect to this problem, it says that to estimate the age of dead organic materials, scientists use the following formula which denotes the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 present at any time. And so this is our ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12. And really what this is saying is, is if we know this ratio, then I can tell you a time, but also if I know a time, I could denote that ratio. So seeing what this model is really relating now and looking at the question down here, it says estimate the age. In other words, what are we looking for here? Time or ratio? It says estimate the age. We're looking for time. And it says of a newly discovered fossil, fossil in which the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 is this. And so what they're doing is they're giving us this R value here. And this is quite a small R value. We're going to say that R is 1 over 10 to the 13th power, which is crazy small. But if this is our ratio, how are we going to find the time? Hey, it's as easy as if I'm giving you a ratio and asking for the time, we're just going to go plug this into our model and back solve for what we don't know. So looking at our model here, we're going to go plug in for R into our model, this figure or this value 1 over 10 to the 13th power. And this is equal to what we have on the right here, which is 1 over 10 to the 12th power. Let me fix that too here, 1 over 10 to the 12th. And this is all times e to the power of negative t over 82.23. So what we're going to have to do is just kind of unwrap this here. And what we're doing is we're solving for t. So in order to do this, I recognize that now, this was the other important part of this, that this is a, an exponential equation, our unknown variable, or our independent variables up in the exponent on this natural base e. So since that's the case, either we're going to take a one-to-one -one, uh, solving approach or we're going to just use inverse properties. And it's going to be a lot easier to just use inverse properties here and isolate the base of our exponent. So to isolate the base of our exponent, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to divide both sides by this coefficient right here. And one thing to keep in mind is when we're dividing with fractions, it's really easy to think about is we're just really multiplying by the reciprocal. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 10 to the 12th. Uh, and multiply that on both sides here. We say 10 to the 12th over 1. We're going to multiply by this reciprocal. And what happens on the right side is we essentially are able to isolate our base here. And so on the right side, let's put this back in red here. We have e to the negative t over 82.23 power. And on the left side, what we get here is we have 10 to the 12th over 10 to the 13th, which another way to look at this is 12 of these tens up here cancel out with 12 of these tens down here and we really just get 1 over 10 left on the left hand side. Another way to look at this is 12, uh, 10 to the 12th over 10 to the 13th is what we would have gotten. And remember that when you divide things with the same basis what we're doing is we're subtracting their exponents. So we get 10 to the 12 minus 13 which is really 10 to the negative 1 which using our rule of negative exponents or negative exponent rule is that 1 tenth that we see here. So now that we've isolated the base, let's go ahead and use our inverse properties. That is to say that we're going to go ahead and take a log of both sides, but we have to take log base e, or our natural log. And let me say something here. It is not okay to write that on the right-hand side over here. We are not multiplying by a natural log. 
we were saying we are taking the natural log of this one-tenth on the left, and that would be the same thing as the natural log of everything else on the right. And so by our inverse property, we have our natural log of an exponential thing with the base e canceling out. And so we get left with just negative t over 8223 on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, we just kind of have this ln of one-tenth. And I'm going to leave it that way because it is considered to be an exact value. So the only thing we have remaining to do here is multiply by 8223. And I'm going to go ahead and multiply by a negative 8223 to kind of kill two birds with one stone because... We're trying to get t by itself. If I multiply by 8223, I'd still have to take care of this negative, but by multiplying by a negative 8223, we can go ahead and say that we've isolated t. And so we're going to say that t is equal to, let me put this over here, negative 8223 ln of a tenth. And this is our exact value in years. What we're going to want to do is get a decimal approximation for this. And so let's go ahead and put this value into our calculator. We have negative 8. 2, 2, 3, the natural log of 1 divided by 10. And this should give us at a time here uh, 18,934.16, 18,934.16, 18,934.16. And remember that this was a time, and so we're going to label this appropriately. In this case, the model was talking about years. And another thing I'd like to ask you to do is make sure that you put this on your table up here, but we say 18. 934.16, but we want to see this relationship on our table as well. So whenever you're given a model, the only thing I can stress to you is to just determine what are our variables that we see in this problem here, and reading usually the last sentence, what is it that I'm looking for? If I know which variable I'm looking for, then I must have a value for the other variable, typically, and we can plug that in and just work backwards to solve it for the unknown, and that's what you call algebra. So, uh, cheers.